Welcome VR lovers to a new tutorial in Unity and in this video I have the pleasure to talk about a new feature of the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, the Poke Interactor. We'll see how to use this new interactor to interact with user interface or any interactable by the simple touch of a hand. Then in the next video we'll use this technique to create a very simple button so make sure to subscribe down below with the bell on to not miss it and of course you can even support my work and get access to exclusive content and the source code of my project by joining us on patreon link in the description below okay so for pork interaction we need to have unity xr interaction toolkit 2.3 installed at the time i'm making this video this version is still in pre-release so if you go to windows package manager Select here Unity Registry and search for XR Interaction Toolkit. There you go. If you cannot find the version 2.3, make sure to go here to the settings, Advanced Project Settings, and here Enable Pre-Release Package. Now you can close this window and now there should be a Show Other Versions button here and if you click on it, you should be able to see the version 2.3 that we need. But anyway, I also made this video right here that will show you step by step how to do it if you have any issues. Now let's get started with the POG Interactor setup. In my case, I have made a very simple XR origin setup with end presence as you can see here and I've also made a video showing how you can do this if you have any trouble. Now in my case, I'm going to select both my hands by selecting the first one, press Ctrl key and selecting the other wand. Perfect, <laughs> let's right click create empty. This will create an empty game object as a child of both these ends and let's rename the first one under the left hand, left hand poke interactor. Then right hand poke interactor for the second one. Now let's select both these ends again, click on add component and search for XR poke interactor. Then we can press on enter. And there you go, and believe it or not, but that's almost everything that you need to set up for the POG Interactor. No need for any collider or anything as you can see, but the only thing that we need to do is to set the position used by the POG here with the attached transform. And in my case, I think the best to do is to use the tip of the index finger on my hand model. So for the left hand, let's go under the left hand model and I have here for the index finger, the ends B L index in your, which is a transform placed at the tip of the index finger, as you can see, and that I think will be perfect. So let's go back to the left end poke interactor and drag there this transform for the attached transform. And there you go. Now what's left is to do the exact same things, but for the right end. So let's search for the index tip of the right end, select back the right poke interactor, and drag it over there in the attach transform. And there you go, that's it, our interactor is ready. And by the way, some useful information, if we go to samples in the project windows, XR interaction toolkit, starter assets, prefabs, XR origin pieces, we can see that there is also a pre-made poke interactor here that you can basically directly drag under your hands to have a ready to use poke interaction and that will use here this little sphere to trigger the poke event. But I think it's best to use the tip of the end model. So anyway, let's go back to the poke interactor and have a look at its component now. So the parameters of the poke interactor are pretty straightforward. You have the basic interactor settings with the interaction layer mask and also the interactor event to trigger some behavior when directly poking an object. And here we have some settings for the depths and widths at which a poke is fired. Now, I will keep this setting in my case like this because I think they were great by default. And finally, as you can see, you have here a parameter to say if you want to interact with UI or not. So in my opinion, this is the most important feature of this interactor. So let me show you how it works and make sure this is enabled. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to go back to the starter asset, prefab, and drag the UI sample in the scene. There you go. We can even put it closer to the player in front of him. And as you can see, this is a simple pre-made canvas UI with a button and a slider. And on this canvas, there is a track device recaster, which will allow us to interact with it through our poke. 
Again, I've previously talked about how to interact with UI in another video, so make sure to go watch it if you want to learn more. But now, let's click on play to see if we can poke this UI. There you go! As you can see, when I get my hand close from the UI, it overwrites and highlights it correctly. But it is only when I touch the user interface that I can select and interact with it. This is pretty cool and I think it's maybe even more simple for someone who has never done VR before to do this instead of having to interact with the ray. But user interface are not the only thing that you can interact with. So let's see now how we can poke any interactable. Okay, so let's make a quick interactable. I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go to 3D object, cube. We can reset its position to zero and even scale it on all axes to 10 centimeters by writing 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 on the scale. Now I'm going to move this cube on the top of the table. There you go. And next, I think I'm going to change the color of this cube to black. So simply by dragging here this black material that I have in my folder on this cube. Perfect. Next, let's click on Add Component and search XR Simple Interactable. So this is the simplest interactable there is. I've previously talked about more advanced ones on this channel, like the XR Grab Interactable, for example. But this one is very simple and allow you to basically quickly check an interaction and trigger a custom behavior. So, for example, if we go to Interact Events, we have here a bunch of events that we can fire when we interact with this cube. And if we go to Select Entered, click on the plus button, let's turn this cube red when we select it. So, by dragging simply the cube over there and select Mesh Renderer Material. And here I have a red material on my project folder that I can drag over there for its parameters. Perfect! We can even set back the color to black when the interactor over exit by clicking on the plus next to over exited here. Drag the cube again, Mesh Renderer Material and drag back the black material that we previously used over here. Perfect! <laughs> Now, like this, we could trigger this change of function with a direct grab interactor by grabbing the cube or with a ray interactor by pointing the ray at this cube. But in the same way, we will be able to do this with the poke interactor instead by simply poking the cube. But there is only one thing left to do at this point and it's to add a poke filter on this interactable. So let's click on add component, search for XR poke filter. And as you can see, a poke filter will basically allow you to say in which direction you want to poke the cube. And by default, it is set to Z axis with an angle of 45 degrees. And in my case, I want to poke from top to bottom. So in the negative Y direction and not the Z axis. So let's change the poke direction to negative Y. There you go. Oh, and by the way, a XR poke filter is required by default for each poke interactor, but as you can see, you can remove this with this require poke filter boolean. But in my case, I will of course leave it like this. Now let's click on play to find if this works. And there it is guys, this is how you can create a simple poke interaction. As you can see, when the poke reach a certain distance, it triggers the select event and it turns the cube red. Awesome! Even more, with this poke filter, you can see that it only works on the up axis and that I cannot poke select with the side of the cube. And there it is, this concludes our tutorial for today. But stay tuned, because next week, we will see how to turn this simple poke interactable into a nice looking button that can follow the position of our finger. So if you don't want to miss this video, make sure to subscribe down below. And as always, a big shout out to all of my patrons, which are the ones making it possible for me to make these. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.